time this uh, format has been used and it's uh, given the added dimension with a possible mid-event venue switch for teams in pools B and D, finishing second and third. The winners of the four initial pools go straight to the quarterfinals and the team is finishing fourth go into a classification phase to decide places 9 to 16. The final game in uh, this World Cup uh, four years ago was the Netherlands taking on Ireland, who were making dreams come true and giving Hockey in Ireland a shot in the arm that was and still is priceless. And now they play again, but on day one of the new World Cup and here in Amsterdam. A new journey, a fresh challenge, could hardly have uh, a tougher beginning than against the world number one or ranked team, the Netherlands, on the home turf here. But Ireland has never shirked a challenge and they uh, now know that dreams can come true if you can match self-belief with an equal amount of skill and determination. The Dutch have the advantage of playing in the recently concluded FIH Pro League, finishing second behind Argentina, of course. Will that high level of recent competition work in their favour or will the energy exerted take its toll? Well, we'll have a clearer idea of that in the next hour or so and uh, Ireland will need to punch well above their eighth place ranking to prevent the Dutch from making a perfect start as they looked to lift the World Cup for a third consecutive time here. Well, as you can see, once again, the magnificent Dutch hockey public have turned out in huge numbers. And I hope you're in a mood for a party at home because they're certainly in a mood to party here, that's for sure. We were lucky enough to catch both coaches before the start of this one. Finally, we're here. Finally, it's a fully packed house. And we are super delighted to be here tonight. Well, Ireland weren't part of the, the Pro League campaign, while you, of course, were involved right up until 10 days ago in Rotterdam. Does that work in your favour, do you think, or against you? Oh, it works totally into our favour. It was, it, was it was just lovely to play in Rotterdam, China. And then we, packed some, uh, we took some rest. And now it's great to be here. You can hear it. It's amazing. Well, I can, I can hear it. I hope you can hear me. But as usual, the Dutch fans have come out in big numbers to support the team. Does that add to the pressure on the girls or do they feed off it? No, that doesn't add any pressure. It's just joy. It's about the love of the people they bring to us. It's about the passion and joy of the Dutch fans. And you could see it. Tonight it's a big party and uh, yeah, we'd like to add something to it. We're certainly here with the ambition that uh, anything's possible and we'll approach every game as it comes. And uh, look, it's, it's a new group. It's a completely different group now than what it was uh, in 2018. But look, I'm really excited about what the future holds for us. Well, it is a very special atmosphere as it always is when the, uh, the Dutch are playing at home in front of their, their fans. But I can see a few green shirts in front of me as well, who no doubt will make themselves heard. Yeah, we, uh, we're dotted around the, the stadium by the look of it. And uh, the Irish certainly come out and support. So we certainly hope that we can hear them cheering for us later on. Well, here come the uh, two match umpires for this one. Hyun Young Kang of uh, Korea and Maggie Giddens of the USA. Maggie's already been in action once a day as a video umpire, so she's having a busy first day of tournament play here in Amsterdam. Famous uh, mascot of Dutch hockey, Stocky, as well as the two teams come out and listen to the roar here. The Netherlands playing, of course, in orange, and uh, equally naturally, Ireland playing in the emerald green. So a special uh, occasion for the two teams and a special occasion for those young team mascots as well. Coming out with uh, some of the greats of our game. Well, I wonder who she's supporting. That's quite a hairdo. So the scene is set here. It's going to be electric as an atmosphere. And if you can't play in front of this sort of crowd, you really are playing the wrong sport. Well, with both teams out on the field, we'll prepare ourselves for the playing of the two anthems. And the first anthem will be that of Ireland.
Well, an anthem that always gives me goosebumps, I must confess. The sporting anthem of this all Irish team. And now, don't adjust your sets, this could be noisy. there of Ava de Huda, who I know for a long time felt she was going to miss out on this World Cup. But she uh, and her medical team have worked miracles getting herself into shape for this World Cup and we're blessed that a player of her undoubted talents is on display here. So the two captains meeting for the toss of the coin at the start of this one. Looks like Katie Mullins uh, won the toss for Ireland there. Fist pumps all round, very much the uh, order of the day. And I'm sure both camps will be delighted to get this one started here in front of uh, pretty much a full house, not a ticket to be had. There is the team sent out by Jamie Mullers to start this World Cup campaign. Anna Venendal in goal. Zandervaard captaining the team from the uh, midfield there. Lively looking forward line of Matler, Lerink and Velton. No weaknesses. Jamie Mulder's very well prepared coach already knows that his tenure in charge of the uh, Dutch team and interim measure is coming to an end but he'll want to go out on a high and I'm sure his girls will want to send him out on a high as well. Hey, the Hooda there, you can see number 24 starting from the bench as is Yubi Yansa, the penalty corner go-to girl for the Dutch. I see a smile back on Ava's face at the back of the shot. It's good to see players of that uh, calibre and experience still get emotional, pulling on the shirt. Still means so much, just as it should be. And here's a team that pulling on the shirts always meant a lot to Team Ireland. Captained by Katie Mullen, up front there, number nine. Uh, four debutants in the Irish team for this tournament. It's an awful uh, lot of inexperience in their ranks, but they won't lack for... Uh, for drive and determination, that's always taken as red with any Irish team. I'm sure Dancer knows how hard his girls have worked in preparation for this tournament. I'm sure he would have winced when he saw the, the first fixture was against the uh, all-powerful, all-conquering Dutch. He could equally, you could argue that there's never a better time to play the Dutch than in the opening game of the tournament. So the scene is set here, and what a what a scene! has been set with uh, every seat in the house taken. Two, uh, two great teams, two fine umpires in, in Kang and Giddens. And it's uh, Ireland who get the ball rolling. Well, I'm delighted to say that sitting alongside me is uh, Sophie Polkamp with uh, a lot of international caps for the Netherlands under her belt. These are always special occasions, Sophie, aren't they, in Amsterdam? Yeah, certainly. It feels like... Uh home here for me as yeah, well yeah. <laughs> no I'm certainly uh, in front of your own uh, crowds it's a special special feeling for them and well, it's going to be a challenging game for Ireland I guess I think it'll be a challenging game in many years for, for both camps Ireland are nothing if not a determined and spirited outfit what happened in London came as a surprise to everybody but of course there are no secrets in international hockey these days and uh, Ireland's game plans are, have been exhaustively looked over and analysed. De Wood is still waiting for her introduction to the game. When I spoke to her, well, probably three months ago, there was a 95% chance she wouldn't make this World Cup. And I think we could see that in the uh, emotion she showed during the playing of uh, the Helmets, that really she's just delighted to be here. 
Yeah, and it's a true miracle. <laughs> uh, a little, a little miracle. I didn't affair. expect it. Our first attack here, here for the go. Dutch. Oh. I'm not far away. Mm. Okay. Lead by Velten there in shot. There was uh, Albers there with a the shot. The girl is uh, getting an awful lot of attention at the moment as a leading player coming through the ranks from the younger players, but really making a name for herself, regularly picked out in the Pro League. And her first World players. Cup, playing her first World Cup with six other players, I saw. Well, oh. the service given as a penalty corner. I don't think Ireland are sure. going to let this one go uncontested. Katie Mullen there making the signal that she wants this one referring. I will check the situation. You give it for foot, yes? Okay, I will check foot, no so foot. So, Lorraine Delforge of Belgium, huge experience uh, as an umpire, as a video umpire as well. I don't see any foot here. I'm not sure. You can see the. Yeah. The okay, the foot from the Dutch player, right? Thank heaven there. Getting a foot on the on the ball, I suspect. But you can see the complexity of the game and how difficult it is for an umpire who herself is moving down there, the speed of the ball and players running across your line of vision. Can you take them to a very deep position well okay, off the field of yeah. play? I have a decision for you. Free it out and Ireland keep the referral. Okay, thank you. So Ireland using their referral to good effect. No surprises for the Dutch already back ready to defend the, the hit out. I think they knew exactly what was coming their way there. Uh, Van Geffen, whose foot it was, on for Matla, plays the ball infield. Electric start this by the Dutch. Ireland need to dig in here. This Dutch team can get swept along with the, uh, with the crowd, the excitement coming from the, the stands as well. I must feel as if you're playing against the entire Dutch nation at times. Ireland heavily outnumbered, but they won't be outsung. Lovely flowing move again coming from the Dutch. Play just breaking down on that right hand side with Lidvai Velter. You can see they really want to start with a lot of energy in this game, and uh, they're happy to start this World Championship, I guess. Waited for a long time. Really eager. Well, I think both camps will have been counting the hours leading up to this one. It'll be marked in diaries from a pretty early stage. First game in World Cup. Strange that it should be a rematch of the, the London final. The Dutch won that one at a canter in the end, but uh, it didn't do anything to take away the sheer joy that Ireland brought to the whole tournament. And it really has changed the face of hockey throughout the... Island of Ireland. And there she is, she's on the on the field. One of the most exciting female players that I've seen in uh, recent generations. And what a ball into the circle that was. Ireland just needs to settle here, put a stick on the ball and start putting a few passes of their own together so not to get swept away. Sean was making the point that uh, this is a new look Irish team. In fact, there are only five survivors from 2018. And the four debutants. They're on a learning mission here. Zandervaard wearing the uh, captain's armband. Both coaches hard at work. Another wave of Dutch attacks. Yeah. That, uh, I don't think there'll be any comeback from that penalty corner somehow. Leader by Velton using her reach and strength there to hold off the challenge. No, there's no doubt about that one. <laughs> So the first penalty corner of the game goes to the, the Netherlands. Yubinyasa there, closest to our picture. Frederica Matler 
alongside two options at the top of the circle. And not bad options they are either. Stop for Matla. What's that come off? That was a foot, right? It's uh, given as a long corner. I think Sandoval was trying to convince the referee, but... Trying to pull the ball back. Ireland struggling to get their feet out of the way and unsuccessful as it turns out. Ellen and Tice there undone by some nifty stick work from uh, one of the Dutch magicians, David Ouda. So corner number two, quick succession. They've set up differently this time. Yansa there with the white headband. Right in the very top of the, the circle. Ready, ready, ready. No matter this time. Yansa takes it on. Boy, she gave that quite a rip, didn't she? Tall girl, long levers, and her technique at the penalty corner is absolutely perfect. So, a couple of warnings for Ireland that uh, the Dutch have this penalty corner, but there again, when have, when have the Netherlands not had a penalty corner routine up their sleeves? It's been their go-to method of winning tournaments for so many years. Just outside the circle, where it has to be. Well, that's a great save for the goalkeeper. Great, great to save. Say. Yeah. Aisha McFerrin, who plays uh, club hockey, of course, in the uh, the Netherlands with with Kampong, where both the men's and the women's teams are goalkeepers for Ireland. Davy Hart, of course, the men, and Aisha McFerrin for the ladies. keeping possession crowd trying to get behind their team and help them over the line of getting the first goal they've had a couple of sighters one outstanding save from McFerrin I really love Xandavard her way of playing she's like a real motor behind the whole team and such a key player for the Dutch. It's interesting that uh, Jamie has handed her the captain's armband for tonight. I think like a number of teams here, they'll probably rotate the captaincy, take some of the pressure off and... Yeah, there's two more captains, right? Pien Saunders. Pien Saunders and, of course, uh, Ava de Hooda as well. So, it was the Australians, I think, were the first ones to, to do that many years ago now. I think Marlouz Gaitels is the... The third one. Right? Well, you may be right. <laughs> time Taking up some pressure time will from tell. Eva. <laughs> I guess when you've got players like Ava de Hood on your side, giving her the captain's armband, you still get the same performance whether she's wearing yeah, it or not. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> totally agree. And I think that's what the coaches have come to terms with, the fact that, uh, yeah, take the individual pressure off, spread it around the team. Albers going shallow around the back, turning on the afterburners and very nearly finding a part in the circles of Ireland had numbers back and they were well placed. Van Heffen linking up with David Abuda, two of the more experienced players. She's been a player over the years, Margot Van Heffen has always impressed me. She's another, what they describe as an honest player. You always get 100% from her. Yeah. Certainly. Very rarely picks up the player of the match awards, but uh, when you analyse what she's the work she's actually got through, she's uh, quite a player. Now Ireland on a break, trying to relieve some pressure on the defence. They've weathered the early storm. 
already midway through this uh, first quarter. No goals. We haven't seen much from Ireland yet as an attacking force. They've got a free hit here in the centre of the field. Yeah. This was Albers taking that uh, outside route around the Irish defence. Jamie looking very relaxed. I'm sure he's not internally. <laughs> oh, this is a beautiful, yeah, a beautiful, beautiful play. Yeah. Now, this is a chance. Oh. And she's missed. Well, I'll put good money on that from Frederica Matala on her own, bursting into the circle. Well, that's such a nice pass. Velton digging it out for Matla. Matla head up there looking. And then trying to catch McFerrin out at a near post. Not this time. Given us a long corner. Mm. Long corner. You touched it. What can Ireland make of this? Michelle Carey on the ball. Plays it back to the halfway line. The space on the left hand side. Ireland decide to use the right flank though. Sarah McCauley trying to whip it across there. Probably one of a couple of players from the UCD team, University College Dublin. Dutch using every inch of this uh, newly laid blue pitch here in the Amsterdam wood. It was always a bit stressful when there's a new pitch. Yeah. <laughs> but, but players are worried, rightly worried, about how it's going to play, but uh, I spent most of the last three days here watching the teams practicing, and uh, I haven't picked up any of the usual uh, complaints and whinges. It seems to be playing very well indeed. Yeah. Good for them. High risk at the top of the Irish circle there, but uh, yeah. good composure on the ball. Well, that's uh, rather fortuitously yeah. ended up in Irish possession, but not for long. Even the combative uh, Katie Mullen couldn't uh, keep that one in Irish possession, but she, typically she's won it straight back again. Real warrior. The girl from uh, Ballymoney. Jamie with his uh, team around him there. Very thorough coach. Well, I'm just starting to push the Netherlands back a little bit here. We should draw encouragement from that. That should be advantage, I, I guess. Sean Dance would make a pretty good poker player, wouldn't he? Giving very little away there with his facial expressions. Now Alan on the attack again, trying to shot from... Oh, well, it wasn't the best of angles, but uh, Sarah Torrens there getting the shot away. Rattling just wide of goal. Good interception by Alan, quickly onto the ball. Well, a little over a minute left in his first quarter. 
Another Dutch attack. Oh, that come so off? It's really the foot. It'll be a penalty yeah. corner. Weaver Janssen. Weaving her way through. And finding the right foot there. Again, no matter on the field. So that'll be eating away at her, adding to her frustration. She does wear her heart on her sleeve, Frederica Mattel, it has to be said. But another real opportunity for the Netherlands here, with just over a minute left in the quarter. To finally get a start in this one. Netherlands nil, Ready. Ireland nil. Ready. Wait. The takes it on. What's that come off? They're allowed to go on, so we can only assume it was an Irish stick. Irish girls desperately trying to rid themselves of the protective equipment. Well, it looks a bit like a teenager's bedroom by the time they've uh, finished <laughs> removing all of the padding and the gloves. Okay. You've not got a teenager yet, okay. okay. but just okay. you wait. Just you wait. <laughs> it takes some years. Look at it. That's recycling it, playing patiently. Last ten seconds in this first quarter. The youngsters have certainly spotted that, and counting us uh, down here in Amsterdam. And so we reach quarter time here with still no goals. Netherlands enjoy most of the possession and the territorial advantage. They've won some corners as well, but so far nothing on the score sheet. I don't think that will be uh, a huge problem for Jamie Mulders, maybe a, a slight irritation. As far as Ireland are concerned, well, they've done everything their coach could possibly have wanted of them. They've matched their opponents and uh, they've had to be very resilient in defence. But after uh, 15 minutes here, it's still goalless. And we've got some highlights for you. Well, as ever, our highlights package capturing all of the uh, atmosphere here in Amsterdam. There's the story of that first 15 minutes, those three penalty corners. The main uh, difference as far as the stats are concerned, but uh, the only one that really matters is the fact that the Netherlands are still to score a goal. It's Netherlands nil, Ireland nil. And as we had hoped for, we've got a real game on our hands here. They had some chances, but they still need to reward themselves, I guess. Yeah, that's a, an expression I'm starting to get used to, re rewarding yourselves uh, with a goal. And there's a girl who's uh, rewarded herself time and time again, Frederica Mattler sitting down there. 98 caps, 99 now, 71 goals so far. And, uh, a lot take, to come. And take it from me, uh, plenty more left <laughs> in, the, in the tank. I dread to think what number she'll finish on if she carries on at a current strike rate. Defenders will not be sleeping easy in their beds. But so far, Ireland have withstood everything that uh, the Dutch have been able to throw at them. Well, I suspect there's more coming this way now. This is Freyke Moose there trying to uh, link up with Maria Vescour. It's okay. Yep. takes it quickly. Really, it's been very well contested. Maurice Cato's there. Another player who's come into the squad after a fairly lengthy uh, spell of injury. Oh, 
Yeah. So Jeremy Mulders was happy to play a waiting game for two of his senior talismans to prove their fitness. That's lovely. Great interchange again. That's yes, oh, a lovely ball through. Surely the first Ooh. goal here. That'll be a penalty stroke. Aisha McFerrin completely undone there by the skill on the ball yeah. of Maria Viscoa and wiped out there by the Irish goalkeeper who was fully committed as she had to be. Lovely craft there from Jansen through to Viscoa and there's yeah, the slide of McFerrin. Definitely the right decision. Well, I think we're agreed on that. And uh, enter stage left, Frederica Matler. It's Aisha McFerrin from the penalty spot. McFerrin is set, Matler is set. And Matler sends McFerrin the wrong way and sends the Dutch crowd into orbit here. The Dutch have got the goal that we uh, might have expected to come fairly quickly in this second quarter after so much territorial advantage, sending the keeper the wrong way and calmly into the backboards. So Frederica Mattler opening the goal scoring here from the penalty spot. But no more than the Dutch play deserves. Well, McFerrin had to take a risk there. She decided to go one way. And uh, Matler decided to go the other. Now, how will Ireland respond to going behind? It's a high ball rule. It's still difficult for every umpire. It's Everybody's difficult for the umpires. It's, it's yeah. difficult for the commentators too. It's always a discussion. Yeah. Very beautiful game, but we also have uh, quite a technical one at times as well. Good. Unfortunately, we have some of the world's best umpires here to uh, to sort out okay. the fact from the fiction. Well, there's the collector's item. Ava de Kuda missing the uh, the ball played onto a stick. Ireland's way to the Dutch half of the field, immediately blocked off by two orange shirts moving across there. And Mullen trying to get her team moving forwards again, and she's done so with good effect here. Naomi Carroll wide on the right hand side. One of uh, a couple of players who plays with the Catholic Institute uh, Club in Ireland. A very experienced player, over 120 caps now for Ireland. I, I doubt that many of them played in this sort of atmosphere, though, in front of a full house here in the Wagner Stadion. nice to see if it doesn't work out the counter they just turn back to the defense and just keep their patience well, oh. did well. quick reaction there from the keeper but yes. unfortunately off her pads the ball was trouble under the defender's foot and the Dutch have another penalty corner opportunity here and Matla's in the field and that's where it is in the field good reactions immediately yeah. from McFerrin but uh, no chance there to defend it. Oh, balancing on one leg. We've got everything here. Keep it easy, Pat. Hurry up. Right. We'll try and read body languages at the penalty corners, and Matler 
Just looking to there. I think he fancied this one. And here's Matthew who takes it on. Long drag of hers. Umpire playing an advantage initially, but now has to go for the, uh, the penalty corner. And there should be no gap this time. Should be taken immediately. So Ireland already back behind the line to defend. and done by a bouncing ball. Got enough on it, though. Steve! Oh, that's a nasty one. Ball was always rising there off the stick of Zandavard. Painful one on the inside of the okay? thigh. Are you OK? Yeah, I know. Yeah, Rushing up yes. to there, feeling... Uh, no, it's one. OK. OK. Ouch. Got it just on the inside of the knee. Thank you. Well, I'm presenting... The Dutch with possession again after a misplaced aerial ball out of defence. Van Heffen had to be a long corner. Five ticket. Glorious yeah, evening you. sunshine here. Yeah. There's an orange aura around the stadium. Matter trying her luck again, but finding only the sideboards outside McFerrin's goal this time. Oh. Difficult angle to take the shot from. She could always try. <laughs> I well, think she made it before. <laughs> uh, she's made it many times before, but you're absolutely right, it is a difficult angle, but when has that ever stopped the likes of uh, Frederica Matler? Play! Sorry, sorry! So, a good control performance so far from the Dutch. Feeding off the crowd, of course, as always they will, but keeping to the game plan. So, studiously laid out for them by uh, Jeremy Mulders. Yeah. Another one. Corner count starting to mount here. Matla going through her party tricks. Mullen there and able to keep her feet out of the way of the ball. Lovely drag inside there by Matler, opening up the Irish defence. There was a lot of space on the left side where Matler got the ball. Sometimes feels like they have an extra player on the pitch, <laughs> the Dutch. Yeah, she's quite a unit, a great athlete. Again, Matla or Yansa at the top of the circle. Turn one from two. Matla taking it on, and that's come off the runner. It'll be a long corner. The first runner is doing a really great job. She is. Yeah, I, it's giving Matla a really hard time. I wouldn't be eager to join the queue to run down a Frederica Matla penalty corner. It requires a certain uh, bravery that was never one of my hallmarks. I once did with Marge Bauman and I broke my thumb, so... Oh, well. <laughs> there you, can, you go. You There's your answer. <laughs> you can join the sick list with me then, <laughs> Sophie, rather. It's uh, an endangered species, I think, the runner. Yeah. Well, and getting the ball out to that left-hand side, they look to try and put a few moves of their own together. A moment most of the energy has been used up in just hanging on to this Dutch team. 
coming forwards on every given opportunity. Katie Mullen oh. as is her uh, style, trying to lead by example there. Maria Verschor, she's playing her first World Cup. She already has uh, loads of uh, caps, but playing her first World Cup. Ricky Matler there being wired up to the uh, Dutch camera position. Probably being told what's happening with the Irish uh, penalty corn defence, I would imagine. Frege moves doing well to hold possession up, but uh, Ireland have rested it away through Naomi Carroll. Oh, James and Pedro at a wow. cracking pace, I have to say. A good speed from both sides. Both sides look equally comfortable with the pace of the game, liking the high tempo. Six minutes left then in the first half. Oh. Farron having to kick clear and finding uh, the Dutch girl there. It's uh, Freke Moose again on the floor in front of her. Freke Moose from Oranje Road. Down in uh, Eindhoven. Both Amsterdam and Sticks are your two old clubs, so if you've got representatives in this team. Yeah. Great, one of the great strengths the former of, teams, yeah. of Dutch uh, hockey is the strength of their club structure. I've been a great admirer of that for, for many years. Yeah. And I know that a number of the English and Great Britain players have been across playing in uh, club hockey in the Netherlands this year. And okay. I know it's very much to their Sorry. regret that many of them have been called back to get into... Uh, England and Great Britain training camps for next season. Yeah. I think they've enjoyed the experience. I'm sure they've benefited, ben benefited from it. I hope very much the experiences of the game they will take back into their respective English clubs. And knowing the girls involved, I'm sure they will. Maddie Hinch will be the one player who remains in the Netherlands. She'll continue to play in goal for Tilburg, having uh, helped that team gain promotion to the uh, top tier for next season. Unfortunately, the men's team at Tilburg were going in the opposite direction, which is uh, a bit of a shame for that club. Yeah. Ireland resting possession away, winning that challenge just outside the 23, trying to launch an attack oh. of their own. Rather hurrying the pass there. We heard the Chilean coach earlier in the, in the day talking about the need for his girls to be a little more patient in possession. And there's an example there, I think, for Ireland where perhaps yeah. Taking a little bit more time, choosing a better pass would have been the option he would have preferred. It's the same advice, I guess. Same advice. Ooh. But like most advice, it's easier okay. said than done sometimes, and certainly video? easier said video? from a position video? of with video? no pressure. What do they ask for? Now the Dutch are asking for... Video mm. for all, yeah, I think. Yes, Kang. I let the defender put a couple of Defense, defender of foot, yes, I will yeah. check for you. Yeah. And she missed the ball, but I'm not sure if the foot was involved as well. Oh, yes, yeah, it was. Inside of the knee. Me. Yeah. I don't think this will take uh, Lorraine Del Forge too long to, to sort out. A bit of a swing and a miss yeah. at the ball there. Kang, yeah. I have a decision for you. Yeah. Penalty corner, and Netherlands keep the referral. Yes. So it will be a penalty corner. 
And the Netherlands keep their referral. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> well, I hope you're having as good a day as we are up here in the commentary box. <laughs> Great to see so many youngsters in the crowd. Well, who knows, in a few years' time, we might be commentating them down Lina. on the pitch. Lina. Ready. Yasa Ready. and Mattler again, the twin Ready. threat. Mattler again slips at this time for Yansa, who oh. shoots straight at oh. McFerrin, and the follow-up is so, oh. so close. That would have been... Wouldn't it just? <laughs> the, the, the script was written for Eva de there, yeah. and she couldn't take advantage of it. She was close, but not close enough. Lovely routine. Oh! That's quite hard. <laughs> OK. Instant shot from Eva de Hoorde. Not far away at all. So nice to have two such great corners on the top of the D. Well, nice if you are uh, in the attacking team. Not so nice if <laughs> if you're having to defend them. If they're on your team, it's an embarrassment great. of riches. <laughs> that has to be said. I think Mattel is enjoying this one. She knows there are goals in this game for her. If she can get the service, but Ireland are still very much in it. Haven't really been able to put uh, the Dutch goal under any sort of pressure at all yet, but the longer the game goes on, with such a narrow gap between them, the more they will think there may be something in it yet. The important thing is they stay in contention. And at the moment, they're very much in contention. But it's going to help. Oh. Well, fired straight at the goalkeeper there from Rita Van Velken. The script was written for her there, wasn't it? The path was open for her, like, the do your thing. of the ways. Yeah. Okay. I found it very you well. That was coming in at knee roll uh, height. She had a lot of time to take the shot. I think she was surprised by that as well. One thing which surprised me is that we didn't see the bulge in the back of the net <laughs> from Velta there. That's, that was very much her speciality. Again, lovely play from the Dutch, linking so well. Oh. A dogged play there. That was the back side of the stick, right? Katie Mullen coming away with the ball. She'd be delighted to see the umpire pointing in her favour as well. You're not tempted to take up the whistle, Sophie? No, I wouldn't advise you either. Such a difficult job. I would never want to be a referee. I would, I would really be bad at it. And so we reach half-time here. The Dutch are ahead, but it's a very narrow lead indeed. Scored by Frederica Mattler from the penalty spot and for all of their pressure and territorial advantage. The Dutch can't say that uh, they approach the second half with any great confidence. The Irish still very much in it. They've been uh, battling in defence and they've restricted the Dutch to very few genuine goal-scoring opportunities. And when uh, the Netherlands have broken through, Aisha McFerrin has pulled Ireland out of a hole on a number of occasions already with some pretty fine saves along the way. So something for the Irish crowd to, uh, to feed off in the half-time break. We're going to take a short time break as well. We'll be back soon.
Welcome back then to a very noisy Wagner Stadion here in Amsterdam, where we're at half time in this uh, game in Poole. Netherlands leading here by one goal to nil against Ireland. But uh, let's look back on the highlights. So, in front of a full house, a replay of the final of four years ago, but this time on uh, Dutch turf. And the Dutch attackers were on sparkling form in the early stages, peppering shots in. That was Felice Albers. Plenty of penalty corners also. Yassa bringing the best out of Aisha McFerrin in the Irish goal there. Dutch saw plenty of possession. And there was genuine pace in their attack. And we were all surprised when Matla failed to find... Uh, the target with that one. Bashkur wiped out by uh, McFerrin. The umpire had no hesitation of pointing to the penalty spot. Matler came up to take responsibility from the spot. Well, we all knew where that one was going and tucked it away firmly into the Irish backboards for the game's opening goal. McFerrin taking the gamble. Penalty corners came and went for the Netherlands. Ava de Gouda there almost capped it, capping her return to the side on an emotional day for her with a goal, but just off target. Matler very much in the thick of things throughout that first half. And McFerrin showing why she is rated as highly as she is in goal for Ireland. So Netherlands lead by one goal to nil. Jamilong, good first half, I think. You're satisfied? Yeah, perfect. Uh, the girls showed really good performance. Uh, what we miss is a score. So the scoreline is not, uh, yeah, doesn't doesn't show what what was visible on the field. But uh, the way of playing, the way of attacking, the way of building up was quite good. Anything specific you want to see in the second half? We make it. We make it too simple. In uh, we we pick up the ball, we win the ball, but then we have to really transfer the ball far easier, and we have to a bit more open up the spice in in the D. I'm sure. Thank you very much. Thanks. Uh, yeah, look, the Dutch are certainly putting lots of pressure on us, and we just want to trust our structures and and what we're trying to do to play a little bit more aggressive and and get the ball forward a bit more. Uh, you said anything is possible. It still is. How are you going to make it work? Yeah, look, I think the next quarter is probably really important. We want to just keep fighting the way that we're fighting and, and certainly our defence has been excellent today and that's the cornerstone of, of any good game against Holland and then we're hoping to create a few more opportunities and, and try and get something in the attacking third. Thank you, good luck. Thank you. Well, as we might have expected, great honesty there from uh, both coaches. Sean Dancer talking about uh, trusting in the structures. Uh, that's what you and I are doing, Sophie, isn't it? The top of our very high comedy position here. We're trusting in the, <laughs> in in the, the structures. structure. Yeah. And it's going to be tested. You can see the Dutch crowd bouncing on the stands over there. Well, we're perched, perched high above them. We we'll get in flight catering up here. Seven penalty corners so far for the Dutch. They won't be happy they've uh, not scored from any of them yet. And uh, Irish's defence, in particular, Aisha McFerrin take great credit for that. 
So the crowd uh, finally stopped bouncing. Our commentary <laughs> position stops bouncing, and away we go in the, the second half. No, Jamie Mulders, Mulders wasn't giving much away with his okay. half time quote to good us song. there, okay, but uh, right. I'm sure he'll be looking for better returns from the penalty corners. Certainly as the tournament goes on. Not through lack of practice, I can tell you, because I've seen it with my own eyes here over the last few days. It's very different. Practicing and I agree and also that he, um, he told us that they need to keep up their pace in their attacks. And I totally agree, just to break up the Irish lines of defense, they should do that. And that's also the way Holland wants to play. So we're expecting that from them. Holland <laughs> turning possession back ball. over to the Dutch here with the sideline ball. Never mind. It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah. Taken quickly by uh, Rene van Laarhoven. Also her first World Cup. First World Cup? Yeah. Sticks her down in uh, Bildhoven. Yeah, before she played for Gampum and now uh, at Stixen. Beautiful club. <laughs> no sticks yeah. her? Yeah. Yeah, it's my yeah, former uh, club. Well. <laughs> One of my former clubs. You've got so many great Five, clubs. Not bad, not bad. Well, it worked out for her, apparently. Ava She's here now. Ava de Gouda's picked up a car for not being five there. <laughs> yes, always a lot of movement between the top Dutch uh, clubs in the closed season. Next year as well. And it's those uh, those clubs, of course, who are the supply line of players for the international uh, team. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Peter Vivelt and one of the players moving on at the end of the season here from Den Bos to to Campong. It's quite yeah, a sign. Surprised me. Yeah, surprised a lot of people. I think that one. And Margot van Geffen going to uh, HGC. Yeah, another, another big change. Yeah, another she's going to play with uh, Eva. Not a bad pairing, is it? No. <laughs> Good. Well done, Kang. But of all the years oh, uh, of success at uh, Den Bosch, maybe we're starting to see a, a little bit of dilution. Yeah, well, I thought that a few years ago as well, but play. that never happened. <laughs> play. It's okay. Dutch eagerly onto the ball again. Miss a place oh, pass. It is a poor pass. It is leave for a player who had sets high standards. Ava de Gouda there on the naughty step and looking uh, sufficiently sorry for herself. Stretch it, stretch it, babe. stretch it, stretch it out. Oh, and just putting a few more passes together early in the second half. Mustn't try and force that final ball. They're going to need to be patient to unlock oh, this uh, Dutch and defense. <laughs> Instant impact. So they're coming in and then playing a Great pass. beautiful pass. Yeah. Great vision there on the ball. Drifting to the right, then playing back down the line to the left-hand side. Penalty corner for the Netherlands, the first of this second half. Yeah, I'm feeling a bit bad for the Irish player because Eva de Goede came up totally by surprise. Totally by surprise. <laughs> he was arriving at a race for knots as well. Feliz Albo there looking patiently on at the top of the circle. 
the mudlands uh, off the pitch now. Yes, there she is. Yeah. Nansen takes oh. it on, all along the turf. And rattling it into the backboards. Yibi Yansa. Broad smile from her. Finding a way past the Irish defence. <laughs> Cue wild celebrations in the crowd. Well, this is a really great place. Well, it's got between between yeah. the keeper and the post. It's always... Ah, uh, I think it's the goalkeeper. Just a little bit off the studs there, I think, yeah, of Aisha McFerrin. I think her view of it was uh, obscured. Yibi Yansa, though, extends the Dutch lead and perhaps makes the fans feel a little more confident. Yeah, it must feel amazing for her as well, her first World Cup in her home country. Well, I'm sure her father's told her a little bit about it. <laughs> That's a long time ago. <laughs> Only yesterday to me, Sophie. <laughs> Only yesterday. What, what are you suggesting? <laughs> we weren't talking about age today. Okay? No, we're not. <laughs> well, not mine, anyway. It's OK. No, this is a real test for Ireland now. Two behind, and Dutch with the wind in their sails. And clearly in no mood to call it a day at two. Matlet in possession. Too far. I have to say, Yib is a lot less argumentative than her father. Is that so? Not a friend of umpires. Well, she just started, so... <laughs> Sometimes it's best not to listen to your daddy. <laughs> it's fine! Stop it! Ireland looking to inject some urgency into the play now. And they've won themselves a penalty corner Ooh. through that urgency and determination. I'm not totally sure about this decision. Well, no, I think Mark 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 Hefford, Hefford, but she's not, she's not confident enough to take it to uh, no. referral, though. Yeah, maybe it. this one already, right? Yeah. Well, there's a question of interpretation at that point. She didn't have the total control about the situation, I guess. Now, Ireland couldn't really do with a goal here, could they? and into the back of the net and oh. Ireland have found a lifeline here oh did they enjoy that one a hair raising experience I think the ball was touched like right in front of Ana Fena oh I think I think it's come off the Dutch defender hasn't it yeah stick yeah on the goal, yeah. I guess. Touched it. Yes. Now, I'll have the Dutch launched a protest here? It yeah, maybe that, obstruction. That they have. It's okay. I saw some players run. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you can yes. put the replay. It's okay. it's okay. Oh, it's... Defender. Yeah, I think 
it's oh, was that an obstruction there? Kind possibly? of an obstruction from Velta, but I'm not sure if it's. No, I just need the global enough. angle. They want to see for a shadow or not. See shadow. Yep. Well, she and Upton giving it a real rip. Okay, and just this time, this one, one more time. The previous Will one. it count? This is a huge call. Dutch girls looking up at the big screen here, trying to make their own mind up. They're not going to get sure to. It could go either way. It could go right, either way. Coming. I'm very confident in the lady who has to make the decision, though. Kang, yes. There is no clear reason to change your decision. Goal stands and Netherlands lose the referral. Oh. Too far away. Okay, no clear. Not clear reason. Okay. Too far away. Okay, call A. It's a goal. Goal. Yes. So it's a goal. We've got that confirmed. Oh. And well. Okay. Slightly spoiling the celebrations. This is really disappointing losing their referral as well. Disappointing for the Dutch girls. I don't need to worry the Irish too much. That's uh, his game on again here. Lose your referral? Lose, yes. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Thank you. Well, Laureen Delforge. I think if Welter just ran more into her, then, then it would be obstruction. But well, I think, I think we're. Clutching at straws a little bit uh, there, the Dutch, but they've uh, seen their two goal lead halved in a moment here, and uh, again Already giving done. Ireland real hope yeah. that they yet might be something in this play, game. Play. Rasheen Upton, the goal scorer there from that uh, Irish penalty corner. Makes it very interesting indeed. Yeah. So all three goals, the two for the Dutch and the Irish goal now have all come from set pieces. Matler with a penalty stroke, yep. Yasser with a penalty corner, and now Roisin Upton for Ireland, also okay. from the penalty corner. I have your back. A smile there yeah. on the face of uh, Katie Mullen. Some frustration there. Well, that will all play into Irish hands. If they can get this Dutch team frustrated, then anything is possible. Yeah. Anything is possible. It's OK. If you would have given this Irish team any real hope oh. of taking anything from this game, given the uh, gap in uh, recent experience. And here they are, still very much in the hunt here for something very special again. Okay. Dutch are a bit shaky right now. They have to just play their own game and tactics and then the opportunities will follow, I guess. Yeah, I think Ireland have got under the skin of the Dutch a little bit here, and they're uh, more than an irritation. A very, oh, very left awkward side, opponent. Left side, not that. Oh. Ooh. A half Some cut there by Matalin McFerrin was uh, arriving at speed. Well, it's been a fascinating game, and we've got plenty uh, left in it yet. Just over five and a half minutes left in this third quarter of play. I'm sure that many of the uh, spectators who came here today were expecting a, a goal fest. And indeed, we might have one on our hands yet, but uh, make no mistake, I'll have made a real game of this one. and kicking clear, straight down the centre, straight back into Dutch possession, and they'll return with interest. McFerrin with the right foot this time. That's 
come off the orange foot. Friendly corner. Well, you can see why people are raving about uh, this Philly Selva. She really is uh, quality on the ball there. Very composed looking player. Yeah, playing on a home turf as well, of course, although probably hasn't played on this particular turf in the colours of Amsterdam, given that it's only just gone down. But she certainly knows this parish. Oh, that's a beauty. That's an absolute beauty. Change of routine. Wow, that worked out very well. I think uh, Jamie would agree with you. Sabine Plunas are there, burying it into the back of the Irish backboards. Yeah. In times of trouble, have a glass of beer. <laughs> but great choice to play like this because oh. they expect, of course. Yeah, thank you. So the latest on the production line of Dutch penalty corner specialist. Being yeah. From the Hurley Club, just around the corner from here, in fact. And I think that's her first ever goal for the Netherlands. Yeah. So uh, one she will never forget. Something she will uh, share with. Okay. The 13,000 or so that have uh, watched it here, and all of you uh, wonderful viewers at home as well. She plays, by the way, at Amsterdam. Oh, she's at Amsterdam, actually. Yeah. 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 Hard to keep up with the movement of the players. forward okay. more hard work for yeah. them to do oh it's a great turnover three minutes left in the oh. uh, third quarter There's going to be quite a fight in the Dutch team for who's going to take the penalty corners now. Yeah. I can think of at least four strong candidates that uh, many of the sides here in Amsterdam, or indeed those playing in Tarasa, would be delighted to have as options in their team. And again, a lot of video watching for the other teams. All the variations in the penalty corners are so many ways to go. Here come the Dutch again. Oh. Matler trying to power her way through. Nothing. Good quality work there from Sarah Hawkshaw. Yeah, that's good. It's good to see players prepare to back their, oh. their skills. Also quite skillful. Carry. They're not a bad team. They really are. No. And they're, they're playing against uh, the world rank number one. Oh. Now Matlet on the loose in full cry. Oh, there you go. Duck powering through. What a chance this oh. is. And again, McFerrin. 
wiping out uh, his elbows this time. It's, it's act exactly the same as the first time. An absolute carbon copy. And again, the umpire with a little choice but to point for the penalty spot. There's Madla again. A mistake in the midfield. Velta on it in a flash. The ball across the centre to Albers. And uh, a committed McFerrin, shall we say. And Matthew Giddens been practising that uh, pose in front of the mirror before the tournament. Pointing to the penalty spot. Now, Matla, now the last time she went to the goalkeeper's uh, the right and the keeper disappeared to the left. What this time? Ooh. Well, the keeper went the right way this time, but he didn't stop those right in the corner from Frederica Matla. And the goal is starting to flow now from the Dutch, as the Irish must have feared they might. Right in oh. the corner. Yeah. Very little uh, margin for error there. McFerrin a, a little bit in the hesitation. But indeed in the right corner, but still... Matla's ball was too hard. So, one minute left in this uh, third quarter. Been a fascinating quarter island, of course, getting their goal. And Putting the game very much back into the melting pot. But now a couple back. For the Dutch taking it yeah. away again. At one moment you think they're in trouble, but <laughs> a few minutes later they're not anymore. So five goals, all from set pieces. Perhaps the only thing that's missing is a quality open play goal. Some of the approach play has been uh, a delight to watch. And no one's yet been able to find the, uh, the finish in open play. Maybe now. No time to take the, the long corner. And uh, the Dutch team going through the gears here with a couple from Matla, both from the penalty spot. Yasa and yes, Lennison with penalty corners as well. Lead Ireland here by four goals still on. With just 15 minutes left and maybe uh, Ireland already in damage limitation territory. They don't want to ship too many more here in this uh, opening game. Try and keep their confidence uh, levels high for the challenges that still lie ahead. So three-quarter time here. Netherlands lead by four goals to one. the story of the game so far for those of you who uh, feed off statistics nine penalty corners for the Dutch those two penalty strokes as well converted very little in the Irish column the circle penetration says it all right 34 for Holland and four for Ireland it does but it doesn't tell the whole story of the, the amount of effort Ireland put in and how uh, deep into the game this game has remained in the balance yeah. Maybe the Buddha up there, maybe uh, being withdrawn. She is coming back from uh, from injury, remember, and uh, there's no way that uh, Jamie Mulders will want to risk a player who uh, still has some niggling doubts about total fitness so early in the tournament for a game that he must now consider is uh, done and dusted. Whether Ireland consider that is another matter altogether. 
Let's go! Such a nice finish. What a finish. What a player. Well, that's the open play goal we've been looking for. And no surprise, the player that called him Maria Vescua there find just a little bit of spark in the circle. What a finish. Oh, well, even in slow motion, this is really traveling yeah. across the face of uh, McFerrin. It looks like they lose the ball here, the Dutch, and then... Buried into the... Uh, the corner of side and backboard there. Perfect positioning. Well, that'll certainly be one of the goals uh, of the day, I'm sure, whether those goals be scored here in Amsterdam or uh, across the miles over in Tarasso. That was, uh, that was quite something from uh, an outstanding player, Maria Viscourt. Just starting to rock here as the uh, Dutch turn up the tempo on them again here. The whole stadium is rocking. You don't want to meet uh, the Dutch winner in this sort of mindset. Still eager for more. <laughs> Norwich fans trying to put a brave face on it, but it's going to be a hard watch, I fear, these next 14 minutes or so. Particularly if you have your uh, eyes covered. Oh. Well, that's uh, not one of the better ones there from Madrika. Yeah. Uh, from Frederica Matla getting right underneath that one. You don't see that a lot. Back to the drawing board there, uh, Frederica, on that one, I think. What? It'll just make her doubly determined to get it right next time around. It doesn't look to me as if uh, Eve de Hooder is coming back in this one. Yeah, I think she's done for today. It'll be a sensible precaution. Real urgency about this Dutch team. Now, as you rightly yeah. said, they've not done with the goal scoring yet. are really sitting back right now. I think they're... I think just trying to manage the, the, the scoreboard as much yeah. as they can. They don't want to concede seven or eight here. And if the Dutch get into uh, the sort of rich vein of form that uh, we've seen, that sort of scoreline entirely possible still. Well, I'm certain that they just want to take something from the game. They've got to go against the uh, world's number one ranked team. But it's been a tidal wave coming at them pretty much from the first whistle to this moment in time. Dutch announcing their presence here in uh, in Amsterdam. They mean business. The medal matches will be played out in uh, in Terrassa just outside uh, Barcelona, where the temperatures are considerably higher than they are here, I have to, uh, yeah. to tell you all. The Dutch, for the time being, enjoying this fervent home support and disappointing nobody in this FIH Hockey Women's World Cup. What do you think of the new four months? I think it's a challenge for uh, for everybody, but uh, I think you have to try these things out. 
I think the greatest challenge is when, it, when the format was uh, was drawn up, nobody knew the state that we would be in as a world. And quite frankly, somebody does a fair amount of travelling. Travelling at the moment is, is not much fun. No. <laughs> and uh, th that will present its own challenges, no doubt, to the teams. Not the teams in this uh, pool, however, because the pools with the host nations in it, they are guaranteed to stay where yeah. they are for up until the... Uh, the quarterfinals. But anyone travelling through major airports uh, around Europe at the moment will know exactly the sort of carnage that uh, that awaits them. Trying to avoid that. Well, the Dutch, of course, eager to make sure they are involved in a in the semi-final, but at the moment playing in front of their, their home fans, really, it, it must be worth at least a goal. Play, play. Sophie, you have played here often enough in front of full uh, full stands. Is it something you, as a team, that you you feed off? Yeah. Does it give you, you additional strength? Yeah, it also kind of brings some some extra nerves maybe up yeah. front but yeah. in the end it feels so good to have like this 12 player behind you really feels like that and um, i think you can get a boost out of it well, especially when you score goals the the atmosphere is is insane and i don't know i i think you can build off of that well, it's a great a atmosphere team. again here and it's great to see the green shirts mixed in with the orange there yeah it's to always great to play in your own country, yeah. of course. Of course it is, but uh, two sides with supporters who certainly know how to start a hockey party. Good, They'll need no encouragement. <laughs> the answer. Nothing. Ball hammered across the Irish okay. circle, yeah. and uh, that'll be a long corner. Hamill there just getting a, a stick on the ball. Yeah, Christina yeah. Hamill from Loretto, one of the day's debutants. That'll be a penalty corner. Okay. Uh, indicating a stick. Tackle there. The pace of the Dutch girls on the ball, making life very difficult for the Irish defenders. McFerrin kicking the ball clear, but the damage has already been done. The 3D hockey again. <laughs> yeah, it is. Difficult to defend. It really is a, a new dimension, isn't it? Answer with a white headband. <gasps> oh, well, that's taken a big deflection along the way. The deflection's carried it wide. Long corner. Dutch quickly getting the ball back into play here. Play. Still an eagerness yeah. about this side. Absolutely no suspicion at all. They're just easing off. They just go for it. From the first whistle to the last. It's a wild one. Yeah. Over here, yes. Would be nice on goal, but as a pass, not so. Not a bad take on the line, was it? No. A few hurling scouts looking out for the uh, player on the line there, picking it off beautifully. Glorious evening in Very Amsterdam. Yeah. Stick, yep. stick, yep. Yep. You hear the young 
umpires there talking to each other, confirming that was a stick. The Netherlands still in position. Dutch looking to mount a big finish here. Ball fired into the circle. You're going to ask me the player of the match in a few minutes. You read my mind. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a few candidates out there. Yeah, it's a tough one, actually. I'm not sure yet. Maybe there's something happening in a few minutes. I can almost, gu I can almost guarantee that. <laughs> Good tank. Dutch still a driven side, still going forward on every oh. opportunity. The cards. Matla has got a green card, I guess. Well, that's going to reduce. I'm not sure. That's going to reduce. I think it was Matla. It looked like yeah, Matla going across. It's going to reduce her chances happened. of a hat trick in the game. She's sitting there on the two goals from the penalty spot at the moment. Kang, the sun is very bright. There she is on the naughty yeah. step. Facing you, so. Okay. Just so mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Maybe I see a replay of that. Yeah. I didn't see Thank anything. You so much. Yeah. Crowd it's struggling okay. with Bye -bye. the sun. Spare a thought for the uh, umpires as well. I think the players are struggling as well. In the old days, the umpires always used to wear caps against the uh, yes. the low sun. It doesn't seem to be part of their uh, dress code these days. Mm. Well, both sides have uh, given their six. all in this game. Ireland won't need any rocking in their beds tonight, that's for sure. They've worked very hard to try and hang on to this Dutch team, who are very definitely in the mood here to put them to the sword. And although the Netherlands lead by five goals to one, the Irish really have stuck to their task. Sean Dancer is looking for a performance from his team to set him up really for the uh, group games that, that lie ahead. Well, I think he's had that performance, that's for sure. Play? Play? Still the girls moving the ball around, making the uh, Irish team do the hard yards. Yes. And still the Irish team prepared to Five put those seven. hard yards in for the team. Oh, oh that nice. was uh, a big foot there. Yeah. Really on the search for a foot. <laughs> Was it? I think. Twenty. That was a Freke Moose on the attack. Mudlass back in the field again. Well, it's uh, perfect timing to come back into the fray in time for this penalty corner. Chance for her to complete a hat trick. No surprise it's gone to her. And uh, equal to it, though, getting the ball out to the near touchline. Matter again frustrated. I think it's tough for McFerrin yep. and the other players in defence to play with this kind of sun. Must be very difficult. Yeah. McFerrin's looking straight down into it. Yeah. And you see from the reactions of the... Uh, the spectators in the stand, just how tough it is. A little bit, yeah. And for our camera operatives as well. But we're not complaining. It's nice to see the sun shining. Yeah.
Well, Sophie, it's crunch time for you. Yeah, well, I was hoping for another goal from Matla. <laughs> <laughs> and it would be you easier. You and she alike. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. What should we say? Well, I think um, it's really nice to see these young players like uh, Yubi Jansen and Plönisse in their first matches on the World Cup. They deliver. It's really nice. So. Um, so. So. <laughs> not not to pressure you, you understand. <laughs> Maybe I should pick someone from Ireland. <laughs> um. Okay, I would say let's go for Plunisa. <laughs> so being Plunisa there? Yeah. Sophie's player. Playing in her home, on match. her home pitch, in her home country, and scoring a goal. It was a really nice goal as well, so. It doesn't get much better, I guess. No. Twenty-seven. She's like playing her tenth cap. Holland looking to put on the grandstand finish, ah. and they have a chance to do just that. Another penalty corner with less than fifty seconds remaining. Ireland protesting, and uh, they're going to take it to video here. Yes, Maggie. Do you see if there's any reason to not give that penalty corner? Yep, I will review the play. Well, it's a very open question. Is there any reason not to give the penalty corner here? Yeah. Wow. Well. Well, two, two Irish That's players uh, involved in this collision here. All right, decision coming. Maggie? Yes. There is no clear reason to change a decision. Penalty corner and Ireland is Ireland well, lose their throttle as well. Not that that's going to make uh, much. It was a bit of a marmalade sandwich there, wasn't it, with the orange uh, sandwich routine, the two uh, green shirts. And Federica Matla has to set this one out. Yansa with a long drag. And the Dutch are able to clear the lines out to this near touch line. Well, just listen to this crowd here. They came here to be entertained, and they have been by two very skillful sides giving it their all. The Dutch in the final analysis, just having too much for this uh, gallant Irish team. Who lose out again to the Netherlands, conceding five goals on this occasion. And the Dutch launched their attack on a th third consecutive World Championship with a convincing enough win here on home territory and leaving us with the Suspicion there's more in the tank still to come. Matla with a couple of penalty strokes, Yibianza and Plenisa with uh, penalty corner goals and Maurice Viscour with the standout goal of the game for my money at least. Ava de Gouda there embraced by a teammate. She's got through this uh, first challenge. She's got a game under a belt in this World Cup. Didn't feature in the final quarter but certainly was influential when she was on the field and sensibly perhaps just rested by Jamie Mulders. Ireland, as ever, gave everything. There are a few teams in the world that would have lived with the Dutch on this sort of form, in this sort of atmosphere. And uh, Ireland, once again, adding to their reputation Embraces all round from uh, 
both sets of players. A game that befits the FIH World Cup for women. Always good to see the goalkeepers once the uh, helmets have come off, isn't it? <laughs> and seeing what uh, lies behind them. Ava de Gouda with a smile on her face. We saw her in tears at the very start of the game during the anthems. I think a moment of uh, relief that she had actually made it to this World Cup, which looked for so long as if uh, it would not be possible. So Ireland must go away now and regroup. Lick the lick their wounds as it uh, was after uh, that one. But they've announced their arrival here in Amsterdam and look forward to the challenges that lie ahead now. So uh, some aggressive goalkeeping there from Aisha McFerrin leaving the umpire with a little uh, option but to point to the penalty spot sending the keeper the wrong way and sending the Dutch fans in Dorbit with Frederica Mattler there Janssen made it too with a fierce low penalty corner conversion how would Ireland respond in kind well it was uh, Rasheen Upton who found a way through to reduce the arrears another penalty corner and this time it was uh, Plunasa for the Netherlands rattling into the back of those Irish backboards. McFerrin again, this time taking it Albers again, the umpire pointing to the spot. Up steps Frederica Mattler, and this time the keeper went the right way, but the ball still went past her and into the back of the goal. And then the moment of, uh, of magic from Maria Viscua on the ball and whipping it with real power right into the corner of the Irish back in sideboards to seal the deal in favour of the Netherlands and to set them on the way in this home leg of their World Cup journey. So two for Matler, Janssen and Plunasen from penalty corners and Viscour with the only open play goal of the game. And there is that long list of uh, Dutch domination there, 13 penalty corners in their column there, 18 shots on goal and 48 circle penetrations against just five for the Irish. I think that tells its, uh, its own story. So a convincing win for the Netherlands here on their home turf, sending their fans home happy. And uh, I'm hoping that down at pitch side, we are almost ready to speak uh, with our player of the match, who today was Sabine Plunisser. Sabine, congratulations. Uh, a very important win and a great start to the World Cup. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, very great. Uh very great start, we're really happy to begin, to finally begin with the tournament. Uh, we trained a lot, so very happy to kick it off with a, with a good win. Do you score many goals of that sort of uh, power? Uh, well, not in the Dutch team, so uh, no. no, I've scored a few in my club, but uh, yeah, no, this was crazy. Uh, I don't know what happened, but uh, it was really great, yeah. Well, the goals were a little slow to come initially, but once you got into the groove and you found your mark, you really put Ireland in a lot of pressure again. Yeah, we uh, talked in halftime that we need to put more pressure on them and keep the tempo going and uh, create more space for ourselves around the circle and uh, it resulted in a nice goal, so uh, that was nice. Well, you are playing on your, your home turf, albeit a new one to you in its uh, state of blue. But yeah. uh, what was it like playing in front of this sort of crowd? Yeah, unreal. I had to look around sometimes because uh, I've never played in front of the crowd like this and to be at a hometown, that's uh, yeah, insane. Well, they certainly gave you a lift and uh, congratulations. You were our uh, player of the game. Thank you so much. Good luck for the rest of the tournament. Thanks now. a lot. Thanks. Well, we're also hoping to get a word with uh, Rasheen uh, Upton of uh, Ireland down at pitch side. Rasheen, what was that like out there? It looked like very hard work for your girls. 
Yeah, I mean, uh, what an atmosphere, you know. The last two years we haven't we've gone to an Olympics without a crowd to come to, you know, the number one team in the, in the world, to play them in the opening game of a World Cup with a crowd like this. It was um, it was phenomenal. But yeah, of course, I think we were happy to keep the Dutch out in the first quarter, to keep it to 1-0 for, for a while, and then, you know, even to get back to 2-1. And we'll be disappointed about a couple of mistakes, but um, really, really proud of the defensive effort today. At 2-1, after your goal, you were very much in it, weren't you? Yeah, it was, it, was, um, it was nice to get one back. You know, we talked about how important short corners would be, so that one was for Nancy Stevens watching over in the States. Well, that was never going to be an, an easy game for Ireland, but how do you approach the rest of the group games now? Ah, uh, yeah, you know, we're going to take one game at a time, as always, and uh, we've got two rest days now before we get ready for a really tough game against Chile. Well, let you get away and get those feet up. Well done today. Thanks a million. Well, what a wonderful uh, evening scene it is here in Amsterdam. And that to win for the Dutch on goal uh, difference pushes them to the very top of Pule, a position they will want to occupy right the way through the, the games here in Amsterdam. Germany join them on three points. Chile and Ireland still looking for, for points, but they've let nobody down with their performances today. And it looks like the party's already started uh, over there in the stands. So many youngsters here coming to watch their heroes in action. Wonderful scenes then here in Amsterdam. I hope very much you've enjoyed the three games that we've uh, offered to you today. Plenty more hockey in this FIH Women's World Cup still to come, of course. And uh, there is a programme uh, to behold for tomorrow. England against India will be here in Amsterdam, as will uh, Germany against the Netherlands. Yes, Germany against the Netherlands. The atmosphere was great today. It'll be even more tense, even more special tomorrow. I hope you can join us. We'll be uh, back here again to bring you all of the action, all of the goals and all of the comment. And uh, it wouldn't be the same if you weren't there with us.